Welcome to Vention Tips. Today, we'll be covering how to build a custom user interface in machine logic. For today's video, we'll be using the same design and program from the tutorial on numeric variables and conditional loops. Our goal for today is to create a custom UI that will allow operators to input a desired poster size for the gluing application. If you'd like to follow along or even start from scratch, both the link to today's design and the previous video will be found in the description below. The session will be broken down into three main parts, editing the original machine logic script, building the UI, and operating the UI. If you're starting from your own design, make sure you already have a machine motion controller. Now that we're ready, let's open up the machine logic editor at the top of your screen. As you can see, the machine has been pre-configured and already contains a base program from the previous tutorial. This machine logic program functions by having our machine follow a rectangular spiral path and whose purpose is to deposit glue along the back of a poster board. It has been slightly modified by adding a variable called spacing, which will be touched on a little later in the video. Part 1. Editing the script. In the main sequence, we'll have to add a few commands that will be needed for our UI to function properly. We'll start by adding a wait for command and set it to wait for an event. An event is a specific action that must be performed in order for the program to move on to the next command in the sequence. The topic is the name that will be referenced by the user interface later on in the video. For simple interfaces and programs, the message field can be left blank. We'll name the topic start and leave the message blank. Now at the end of the main sequence, we'll create an add message command. This will allow you to output a customized message to the user interface. The first field dictates where the message gets sent to, and the second field, level, indicates what type of message it is. For us, we'll select info and type out a message that will let the operator know that the machine has completed its function. These commands can also be used to indicate an error in operation or a warning if a specific event is triggered. Part 2. Building the UI Now that we're done modifying our machine logic script, we'll switch over to the UI Builder tab. The top of the builder shows the application that you're building the user interface for. The play and edit mode buttons at the top right allow you to switch back and forth between operation view and editing view. The main area in the center is where you will assemble your interface, and below that is where you'll find the available widgets you can use. To build your UI, all you'll need to do is drag the widgets you would like to use into the grid section from the bottom row. From there, you can edit their functionality and resize them if need be. For the interface that we're looking to build, we'll need four different widgets. First, we'll start by adding an information console. This is where any messages added to your machine logic program will appear, such as our program completion message we created earlier. You can resize your widgets by dragging them from the bottom right corner. After this, we'll drag in a variable input block below our console. A window will automatically appear to configure the button. The label is what will be displayed on the interface once complete. We'll name ours poster size. From the variable to link dropdown menu, we'll select origin. This is the variable that will be modified when a new value is input during operation. From the type dropdown menu, you can select one of two options. First, you can choose number input, which allows the operator to input any numeric value they would like to use. This is good for Hymix operations where more fine tuning is needed. Moreover, you do have the ability to set a minimum and maximum value. The second option, predefined values, presents the operator with a predetermined list of numbers that the operator can then select from. For this variable, we'll select number input and set a default value of 450, with a minimum of 100 and a maximum of 600. Once complete, press done. We'll add one more variable input widget, this time selecting the spacing variable as the one we would like to modify. Let's rename it spacing and input three predefined values of 25, 50, and 75. If for whatever reason you would like to modify your widget, simply press on the cog icon to reopen the editing window. Now, let's add a button to our interface just below our variable inputs. We'll rename it start and from the drop down menu select the event we would like to trigger with this button. It should be noted that the event and the message must match the ones used in your command in the machine logic sequence. Let's extend the button out and finish the UI by adding a label widget at the bottom. A label is essentially just a text graphic that can be used for naming, instructions, and more. We'll fill ours in with poster board glue dispensing. Now that we've created our interface, we'll switch over to the play mode and see how it works. Part 3. Operating the UI in play mode, to test the UI, simply press play at the bottom to run your machine logic script and use your interface as you normally would during operation. For the first run, we'll input a poster edge size of 500 and select the spacing of 75 and press start. From here, you can see the machine executing the sequence based on the values input.
Once complete, we can run again by pressing play and modifying the program to run for a poster with an edge size of 200 and a spacing of 50. That wraps up our session on using the UI Builder in Machine Logic. Thanks for watching and happy designing.